Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate somebody's age. So let's say, for example, we have uh, this example for somebody named Mike, and this is their birth date. And let's say today's date, let's just type in the Excel function that gives us today's date. So I'll type in equal today, and then just press tab to complete it, press return, and it will give today's date. So there's a couple ways that we can calculate the age of the person. I'll show you some different examples here. Now, if we just wanted to calculate the age uh, in years, there's actually a year function that we can do. And this is basically using equal year. Now we use the, the today's year, and then we close parentheses and minus the year, and then tab, and then use the birth date year. And if I press equal, oops, I forgot to put a closing parentheses there, and Excel did it for me. So I'll go ahead and just accept Excel's uh, output here, click yes, and it'll say four. But there's a little caveat here. So what the year function does is strips out the year from both the this date and this date. So it's basically 2014 minus 2010, which gives us a four. But what if Mike was born on December, right? It'll still give us the year four, but Mike is not really four years old until um, the today's date is past December, December 1st. So there's a little bit of a caveat using the year function. Let me go ahead and change this back to 11, or basically change it back to February. Now, if we wanted to do a more exact a calculation, we can actually do a manual calculation. And so basically what we can say is we can say equals today's date minus the birth date. What it's going to do is it's going to give us a serial number representation of that calculation. So the way that Excel sees dates is on serial number. So basically, this is how it's going to see it. What we want to do afterwards is we want to go ahead and put it into another formula. So I'm going to say equals this divided by 365.25. Uh, uh, reason why we put the 25 in there is it is calculating out uh, the leap years, the inclusion of the leap years every time we get an extra day every four years. So if I press enter, you'll see that it's actually 3.93 years. So that actually calculates it out. Now, we really don't say 3.93 years, so what we need to do is round it. So there's two ways that we can round it. Uh, one, we can use the integer function, that's INT. I'll go ahead and click on this and just click on that number. And what it's going to do is it's going to round down to 3. And there's also another way we can round is using the round down function. So it's equal round, round down and click on this cell. And how many digits do we want to round down? Basically zero. We want to get, a, we don't have, want to have any decimals. So I'll go ahead and close parentheses, press enter, and we'll get the same output. So really, uh, Mike is three years old because his birthday is on December. Now, if we change it back to February, let me go ahead and delete that one there, and then you'll see that it changes accordingly. So that's very accurate. So let's go ahead and try another function. There's also another function if we do want to go through the manual calculations and then rounding it down. What we can do is use the date diff function. So what the date diff function is, is actually it's an undocumented function in Excel, but it lets you calculate the difference between two dates. And to use the date diff function is equals date diff. You notice that when I go ahead and try and type it out, there is no tip on the date diff function. So it's not one of those documented ones. So let me go ahead and type DIF here. Oops, DIF open parentheses, and it takes three arguments. So the first argument is the start date. So basically, it's going to be the birth date. And the second argument is the end date, and that's today's date. And then the third argument is what kind of output do we want to give it? So if we wanted to have it figure out the year, it's actually just the output is just Y. So it's just the Y in close in quotes. So it's quote, Y, quote, and Y stands for year. Go ahead and close the parentheses. Press enter, and you'll see that it has correctly identified four years. So the this particular function is more accurate than the year function. It's basically the, pretty much the same as the manual calculation. The uh, manual calculation here. So the date diff function is actually a pretty useful function. Uh, these three arguments. Uh, the, the third argument is probably something that most people would have a question on. How do I know what the other value? What can be my other options for that third argument? And there's actually a couple other options you can put as a third argument. Uh, as we mentioned, Y is one of them for year. If I go into sheet two here, we'll have a list here, this table that indicates some of the other options that you can put. Uh, you can put month, M for month, D for date. You can also put the MD. 
What this means is that it'll give you the difference between days and it's going to ignore the month and years. Uh, very similar to the, these last two here, it'll give you the option of months and the days and the years are ignored. And it'll give this, this, third, this last option gives you the difference between days and it's going to ignore the years and dates. So uh, let me show you an example of how we can use some of these other options in the date diff function. So let's go back into here where we have this date diff function. Let's say that we wanted to have some fun. So let's say, for example, we want to say, how old is Mike in terms of years, months, and down to the days? What we can do is we can actually use the date diff function to do that. So the years basically is what we had before, or similar to what we had before. We can go to date diff. And what we do is open parentheses. The start date is the birthday. The end date is today's date. And y for years, right? So that's going to give us three. So for the months, what we can do is type date, date diff, open parentheses, start date, end date. And then for this last option, what it's going to be is it's going to be the months. So it's going to be the ym. So it's going to give us months and, and ignoring the years. So we Mike has is three years and 11 months old. And then for days, you could state it date diff, open parentheses, start date, end date. And then in this particular one, it's going to be open quotes MD. So it's just going to give us a date irrespective of the month. Right? And so close parentheses, press enter. So what we can say here is Mike is three years, 11 months, and four days old. So the date diff function actually gives us a little bit more detail in terms of what we can do to show somebody's age in, ter in terms of years, months, and days, and kind of put that all together. Now another nifty function is this month function. So let's say, for example, we have a list of people and we have their birthday. And what we want to do is filter out the people who are born in a specific month. Maybe we want to have that list for birthday cards. So what we can do is type equal and then type the month function. I'm going to tab to complete that. And just click on this birthday. And then what we can do is it's going to give us a numerical value of that month. So what we, what we want is what we can do here is if we wanted to find out if it equals today's month, what we can do is type equal. Does it equal the month? Go ahead and tab that to complete it of today's month, today's dates month. And it will give us either, whoops, I forgot to put the closing parentheses and Excel did it again and closed it for me. I'll go ahead and click yes. And what it does is it will give you either a true or false. So you can fill, if you have a list of people with a birthday and today's date, you put in the specific formula of to the month of their birthday, does it equal the month of today's date? It will give you the true or false. And you can just filter out the trues and go ahead and put something together like a mail merge or uh, have a list where you can put out birthday cards for folks. So the test of this really works. Let's say the birth date here is 11, November. If I put 11, 1 to 2010, it will ring out true. And so you can use that as a filter the trues and falses as a filter for your list if you want to put together birthday cards and whatnot. So here's a couple examples of how we can get somebody's age in terms of the year and their months and maybe a little bit more detail, years, months, and days uh, with a couple of different functions. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.